Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will study about the suspension polymerization technique. Okay, in the last class, we studied about the solution polymerization as well as we studied about the bulk polymerization technique. Okay, in this, uh, we will be seeing the suspension polymerization. Okay, it is also for what? Addition polymers. Okay, if you want to get the addition polymers, this is also another technique. Okay. Now, in this method, suspension polymerization technique, you need to remember that uh, the monomer that you have taken must be water insoluble. Okay. The monomer, the monomer is water insoluble. Okay. Only those monomer that is water insoluble can be polymerized by this technique. Okay. If it is water soluble, then you cannot go for this technique. Okay. That is um, disadvantage. Okay. The monomer must be water insoluble. Okay. Now, just imagine this is the beaker or a reactor, okay, vessel. And uh, in this beaker, you have a water as a solvent, okay. While in the previous case, solution polymerization, organic solvent was used as what? Solvent. But only difference here you find is the water is used as the solvent, okay. The water is used as a solvent and also the monomer is insoluble in the water, okay. The next step is you need to add the monomer. Okay, monomer addition. Now, since it is insoluble in water, what happens when it fall on the water? They will form a kind of, uh, I take a different, uh, they will form a kind of uh, droplets, correct? They do not uh, uh, soluble. Instead, they will form a droplet in the water, correct? Just like if you have a water, and if you ha add the oil, what happens? The oil will be form a uh, droplet over the water surface, correct? Just like that, the monomer will form a droplets, fine droplets on the surface of the solvent. Okay, now imagine if you are not uh, stirring it, okay, you will be stirring here, stirring is there. Imagine now you are not stirring. If you are not stirring, what happens? What happens is that if this is the one. Um, uh, uh, monomer droplet okay this is another droplet this is another droplet this is another droplet after some time what happened they come close together and they form a bigger droplet if you are not stirring okay the droplets come closer to form a bigger droplet and this process is called as coalescing process okay coalescing okay what is coalescing coalescing process is nothing but if you are not stirring these monomer Okay, droplets of the monomer come closer and form a bigger droplet and that is what we call the coalescing process. Now, we need to avoid that coalescing process that can be done by the addition of, uh, uh, you know, some uh, surface active agent. You need to add the surface active agent or protective collide is added. Okay, you need to add to this what you need to do you need to add the collide surface active agent surface active agent okay s a a means what surface active agent why it is added that will prevent the process of coalescing okay you will get a fine droplets they do not come together to form a bigger droplets if you add the surface active agents okay now the size of the monomer droplet that depends upon certain factors. Okay, the monomer uh, droplet size is there you know, inside this that will depend upon certain factors. We will see what are the uh, different factors on which on which this uh, monomer droplet will depend on. The first factor. The first factor is the monomer to water ratio okay monomer monomer oh, sorry the monomer to water ratio okay 
the size of the monomer droplet in the water depend upon what monomer to water ratio that means if you have large concentration of water okay solvent the large concentration of uh, water and the monomer is uh, smaller in number what happen the size definitely smaller okay whenever you have larger concentration of water and smaller concentration of monomer then the droplet size will be smaller See, now if you have smaller amount of uh, solvent and larger amount of the monomer then definitely coalescing process will happen right so as a result of that droplet size will be bigger okay so that will depend upon what monomer to water ratio okay the next uh, factor is the next factor is the type and concentration of stabilizing agent that is surface active agent is added no to avoid coalescing that depends upon how much amount that you are adding that means concentration of the stabilizing agent okay concentration concentration of surface active agent or stabilizing agent the surface active agent is nothing but the uh, stabilizing agent okay so how much amount you are adding that also matters the uh, size of the monomer droplets in the water okay the last factor on which uh, the size of the monomer droplet depend is the agitation speed okay the speed speed of agitation agitation is nothing but stirring means i already said uh, in the previous uh, slide that uh, here you need to stir correct you need to stir means if you are stirring at much faster rate what happen the uh, droplets will break down correct the droplets will break down into smaller droplets if your agitation speed is very less then what happen you will have the bigger droplets okay so it depends upon it depends upon the speed of agitation also okay on these three factor the size of the monomer droplets will depend okay one is monomer to water ratio concentration of the stabilizing agent and also depends upon speed of agitation or speed of stirring okay well now let me clear this now as i already said the in, uh, monomer let me draw it again this is a beaker and this is a water okay solvent and inside inside this you have what you have the monomer droplet okay monomer droplets are there inside this okay and also stabilizing agent is added in order to prevent the coalescing next what you need to do is you need to add the initiator okay you need to add the initiator to this beaker containing water and the monomer and also the uh, some amount of the uh, you know uh, coalescing agent or uh, what i call the stabilizing agent okay this initiator is there no that is a monomer soluble but water insoluble okay this initiator is monomer monomer soluble the initiator that you are adding is monomer soluble so what happen just imagine this is the droplet okay i have written bigger droplet of monomer okay this is a this droplet of monomer i have written separately and once you are the initiator what happen the initiator let me denote by green okay the initiator will enter into the droplet of monomer okay because initiator is monomer soluble it is not soluble in water so as a result what happen it will go inside the monomer and get the solubilized there okay and you can uh, uh, start the reaction either by heat or light okay just like a previous case okay you can do it that by either heat or uv radiation and the reaction between this and the uh, monomer droplet will take place and uh, we know that uh, the reaction is being what exothermic exothermic process correct because we know that the reaction between the monomer and the initiator is always an exothermic process um and heat is liberated correct 
the exothermic means heat is liberated that heat is there no that will be absorbed by the water okay here you have water no that water will act like what trapping agent for the heat okay it will absorb okay the water will absorb the heat and hence the temperature control is easy in this case okay and um, also the rate of the reaction is also controlled okay while in the bulk polymerization it was difficult correct but here there is no such problem because water is acting like a heat trapping agent and hence the rate of the reaction can be controlled and also viscosity is not raised here okay so just like your solution polymerization the solvent that is here it is water that is helping in the viscosity that means here viscosity rise is not observed you find easy to stir the reaction mixture okay it is easy to stir okay you need to keep stirring okay so here the water is helping for the stirring purpose okay and also this process is the cheaper one okay this uh, suspension polymerization technique is the cheaper why because here water is used correct as the solvent while in the previous case the organic solvent was used correct that is why the technique was uh, a little uh, costlier but here uh, since water is used as a solvent the technique is economical or it is much cheaper process okay and here the polymer form you no know, that is also in the form of pit okay let me clear the polymer formed is in the form of bead okay the polymer formed by the reaction of the monomer and the initiator is in the form of bead okay the polymer is formed in the form of bead or it is in the form of pearl okay that is why the solution polymerization technique is called as bead polymerization okay bead polymerization or it is also called as pearl polymerization technique why it is called as bead polymerization because here the polymer is formed in the uh, it is formed or uh, it is obtained in the form of bead or pearl okay that is why it is called as bead polymerization or pearl polymerization okay now here the polymer is also insoluble in the water and hence the separation of the polymer from the reaction mixture is very easy okay just by filtration okay just by the filtration process the polymer bead can be separated okay and uh, you can wash it with the water okay wash it with the water why washing is necessary because we added the surface acting agent no that may be adhered on the surface of polymer bead okay in order to remove that washing with the water is necessary okay now we will see the advantages and disadvantage of this solution polymerization the advantages so here as i already said exothermicity is well maintained because water will act like a heat trapping agent and hence uh, the temperature is well maintained or controlled okay it is a cheap process okay why it is cheap a process because of water the water is cheaper correct the solvent used is water and that is cheaper and hence it is cheap process okay and once again the viscosity rise is negligible okay water is helping uh, the stirring process and viscosity rise is negligible in this process and product isolation is easier as already said the product that is polymer is formed in the uh, or it is obtained in the form of bead and that can be obtained just by filtration and washing with the water correct and uh, remember the product obtained no that is in the form of bead that can be used as such okay or else if you want the liquid form of a polymer you can dissolve that in the suitable solvent and it can be used in adhesives or it can be used in coatings like that okay so these are all advantages of the uh, suspension polymerization technique next we will see the disadvantages okay disadvantage is that the only water insoluble monomer is used as already said in the beginning of this video the water insoluble monomers are used if you have water soluble monomer then that cannot be polymerized by using this technique okay and the purity of the polymer is low why because there is a chance that 
as i already said just imagine this is your polymer bead and on the surface of this there is a, a surface active agent still uh, adhering on the surface of this bead polymer okay so to remove that uh, small traces of surface active agent is a uh, little difficult okay it is not just uh, uh, done by the washing with the water okay excess amount can be removed but there is a possibility that trace amount okay smear the small amount of surface active agent can be still present in on the surface okay that is difficult to remove and as a result purity of the uh, polymer is little lower it is difficult to control the polymer size okay so polymer size um, is difficult to control in this technique okay these are the disadvantages of um, so uh, suspension polymerization okay if you have any doubt in this video please let me know in the comment section okay well if you like the video please subscribe and share the video and uh, please don't forget to like the video okay this will help me to motivate uh, uh, to do more videos okay thank you for watching